What? You found Flemeth's grimoire? Ever since we discovered the condition of the Mage's Tower, I had wondered if it might be recoverable. But I had yet to speak of it to you. How fortunate that you found it on your own. You have my thanks. I will begin study of the tome immediately. I suppose something is deserved for all your efforts, is it not? I do not intend to squander this opportunity to learn more than Flemeth wished me to know. This should be interesting. Flowers? For me? They're beautiful! These were her favorite. I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like Mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much. And then the way I left... Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. I don't know what to say. I'm honored. Thanks again. generous gift. Thank you ever so much. A generous gift. Thank you ever so much. Oh, marvelous. Fine gift. You have my thanks. I am impressed. My thanks.
Is that for me? Really? Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. Interesting. Interesting. Your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. All right. Yes. Yes. Yes.
What can I do for you, Warden? Certainly. Warden.
I have been studying Mother's grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. That is closer to the truth than you might think. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else, or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari wilds without me. If I am present when she is slain, I cannot be certain that she will not be able to possess my body right then, so I must remain at the camp. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future, Everything else in her hut is yours. Not really, but the sooner the better, no? I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. And your friends are formidable folk indeed it's good to have you along on the road i'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and i have collected and with your disc
Yes. Indeed. What can I do for you, Warden? Certainly.
What can I do for you, Warden? Certainly. Enchantment? Enchantment! dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. No, that's not what magic is used for. Uh, just make him sleep over on the other side of the camp, with Alistair. With any luck, that will keep all the stench confined to one small area. Rest, rest would be welcome. Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Thank you. You're very kind to say so. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time. But there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Oh, I don't know. 
I really don't. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone, replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their... humanity. Because every mage lives with this threat, it is constantly on our minds. Do not trouble yourself, though. This is only an old lady giving voice to her musings. So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? I have learned a little of the strict caste system of the dwarves, and I apologize for saying this, but it seems terribly backward. Regardless of what happened in your past... I am glad you found a place with the Wardens, as I'm sure you are too. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? If that is your goal, then I'm afraid you will be a poor Grey Warden indeed. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others, about serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men and you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus it is you who serves, not they. A good king, a true king who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. If you live apart from others and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you?
I've seen the way she looks at you, the familiarity with which you speak, how she always finds a way to place herself next to you. It's almost too sweet for my tastes, and I'm an old lady who should be making lace hearts and fuzzy blankets with animal motifs. No, I won't be making socks with pom-poms for you anytime soon. But that's hardly my point. I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Leliana is a remarkable girl, sincere and guileless, and she has opened her heart to you. I would not like to see her hurt. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? Nothing is certain. Not in these times. You cannot take anything for granted. I want you to be aware of this. Obviously not, if you think that this fling of yours is going to endure. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. What's on your mind? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. I suppose I must be. What's on your mind? Hmm, is something troubling you? You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. And that gives me hope. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? It was said that watching the wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Maker's mercy, it's like talking to a child. Yes, there are griffins in this story. The blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums, and stood before the armies of men. Yes, Griffins. Now listen to the rest of the story. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. 
They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then, demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice, the Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the great kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. You are observant. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Wardens past, and now it shall be your blessing and your burden. What's on your mind? No, you won't. Were you expecting an, oh, I'm sure you will. You'll have dozens of babies and die happy and old in your bed. No, you won't. If I had said that, it would have been a lie, and I would have been doing you an injustice. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. I didn't. Not for a long time. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. Well, I was dreadfully morose. Surly. Anyway, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, the chapel. I must have looked tearful or made some noise, because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things. But she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason, and fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was fifteen, maybe sixteen, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest. But we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. Not all priests choose their path. Some children are given to the Chantry to raise and become initiates. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life, as I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you, that you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty. And there is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours, and their happiness is your happiness.
It isn't healthy to throw yourself at a pack of darkspawn either in order to save the world, so I'd say you're in no position to judge. You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden, or you can accept it and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. What's on your mind? I will answer to the best of my ability. The Circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do, and I would be part of it. Yes, I did leave them. But if the blight is not stopped, all of them will face suffering greater than what was seen in the tower. The Grey Wardens, all two of you, need all the help you can get. I will see this through to the bitter end, and after that, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the Circle. No, of course I don't. I'm old and unsure of what I'm doing. Actually, I'd rather be in a warm chair in the sun, being served pudding, or some other easily digestible food. Well, get on it then, and make sure there's a blanket in my chair, and that it's soft, and that the pudding doesn't have cream on it. Cream gives me gas. What's on your mind? I will answer to the best of my ability. People don't become mages. They are born mages. The talent just surfaces later. But you are asking how I ended up at the Circle. I was brought there by the Templars, just like many of the other apprentices. I don't remember very much. I was very young then. I didn't have a family. I never knew my real parents. My earliest memory was of hiding in a hayloft on a farm, trying to keep warm. I was found, and the farmer's wife was kind enough not to send me away. But they had children of their own, and I was never made to feel welcome. The eldest son was the worst. He was always calling me a stray, and throwing anything he could get his hands on at me. And I don't know how it happened, but one day... He just found his hair on fire. Fortunately, there was a large trough nearby. He ran screaming, dripping head and all, to his mother. I was shut up in the barn with a bowl of water and a crust of hard bread. The Templars arrived several mornings later. One of them ignored me, but the other was kind to me. He gave me sweets and even sat me on his shoulders once when I wanted to look over a high wall that ran along the road. I'll never forget the moment the Templars led me into the entrance hall of the tower. I had never seen anything so grand in my life. I stopped being afraid then. I knew I was home. Well, that's about all there is to my tale. That's how I came to the circle. I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules, and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. A single word, spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync and lack of focus, and we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. Without the Circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the Circle, the joys of fellowship in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the Tower, and I loved it. What's on your mind? 
I will answer to the best of my ability. I enjoy the nights at camp. The night always seems more peaceful to me, safer. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Silly, isn't it? The darkspawn never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. Sometimes, I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you still watchful, and I know you're watching out for me. What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are our, our leader and my friend and sometimes I think that m maybe we could be more than that. Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. What? Are you saying I have bad taste? Why can't I like you? You're a good person, a great listener, uh, a remarkable warrior. You often show signs of intelligence, and you're fairly good looking. Most of your facial features are in the right place. You're welcome, I try. There isn't much more I can say. My feelings have been laid bare. You are very special to me. Really? N no one told me. You, you felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? You made me say all those things. Why couldn't you have said them first? Oh, you... Oh, how very awkward! Oh, chivalry is so dead, making the lady spill her guts like that. Well, I, um, that settles it then. The stars are out. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight, that whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, 
when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love and beseeched the guards to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. It doesn't end so badly. It ends hopefully. Elindra will one day be with her love again. We don't know when, but she will. This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I think I would be lucky to experience an emotion even half as pure and true as Elindra's love. The world gets lonely too quickly if there is no one to share it with. I'm here for you. Of course. Mm, I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? We've traveled far and wide. Does it need to end? There's so much out there. Adventures to be had and stories to be told. I want to be part of it all. I might need some company. And you're not too irritating. You're welcome to come along if you like. It is settled then. You and I wandering the world, seeking our fortunes. I can't wait. I'm here for you. Of course. Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Which one? It will come to you soon, I'm sure. I'm here for you. Of course. Wait, you want to talk uh, about us? Is there something bothering you? You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to... Look someone up. I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But after I became a great warden, I did some checking and, well, I found out she's still alive in Denerim.
she's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about her except her name and where she lives. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Something on your mind? Of course. Others, yes, but not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. Something on your mind? Of course. Such as they are. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. Something on your mind? Of course. You never asked? <sighs> All right. If you want the full explanation, I'll give it to you. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you, I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? Yes, well, I suppose part of me kind of liked you not knowing. They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them, instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it, and I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Hello? Have you met me? I... I'm no leader of men. I don't want to be the person sitting on the throne and making decisions that affect the lives of others. That... it just isn't me. I guess I should be thankful that Arl Eamon is far more likely to inherit the throne. If he's all right. Oh, I hope he's all right. And for what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. It was a dumb thing to do. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. Something on your mind? Of course. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Make fun of my comrade in arms? Perish the thought. Well, you tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? That's a disturbing mental image you've conjured for me right there. I, myself, never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know... Well, living in the Chantry is it's not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They, they raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? 
I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come after all. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. Something on your mind? Of course. You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see. Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret, it's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, and <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. Really? I saw you eating dinner the other day. Savage. Ah, yes, the classy camaraderie of two men traveling out in the open. I take it you were like this before the joining, then. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the darkspawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The Taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. You'll always find Duckspawn down where the Dwarves are. The oldest Grey Wardens head to the Deep Roads for one last glorious battle. Not that there's a shortage of Darkspawn during a blight, but that's the tradition. The Dwarves respect us for it. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. And there you have it. You think if we asked for volunteers that Grey Wardens would exist? Maybe a few. You wouldn't be here. Neither would I, probably. And the blight needs to be stopped. You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. We can look forward to ending the blight. That's what's supposed to make this worth it. Something on your mind? Of course. I didn't know them for very long, but I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. There was one when I first joined, a dwarf named Kerrick. He was one of the elders, and he, he left for Orzammar before the reports of the Blight began. 
It's too bad, really. Kerrick said that he never wanted to go back. He wanted to die fighting Darkspawn on the surface. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? It was Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow. It doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. <laughs> I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... Until... Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but it just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his, that I could take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. Yet he doesn't seem quite so bad as the Chantry tells us. According to them, his philosophy is vile and evil. Yet he seems so reasonable. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? Hmm. I'm not so sure that his regret means the same as it would for us. The Kunari sense of honor is... is a bit hard to grasp. For me, anyway. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? That's one way to put it. I noticed that... You and her have become close, am I right? The rest of us have talked about it. You think we have better things to do than gossip about you? You give us far too much credit. Is it true or not? I thought so. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so, so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. Yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan, do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no, I don't like her at all. Why, do you? Sure. Beautiful, just like... like something that's also dangerous, like a... beautiful... dangerous thing.
Yes, one of those, but more evil. <laughs> Just tell me one thing. Is it true what the others say? Do you have a, a thing going with Morrigan? Tell me it's not true. You think we have better things to do all day than talk about you? Come on, tell me it's not true. Oh ho, someone's a little touchy, eh? Attacking my manhood and everything. That must mean it's true. Well, fine. It's your funeral. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? Something on your mind? Of course. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. I have wondered that myself. It is one of the many things I find puzzling about your behavior. What is there to be puzzled by? I'm a simple creature. I like swords. I follow orders. There's nothing else to know about me. I knew there had to be some reason I continue to travel with you. In any case, we should go now. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. That is... complicated. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. Perhaps. I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. They said they found me with nothing. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Callanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. You called. I am hardly surprised. To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. 
He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. Does it? It's also his weakness. If he stumbles and falls over, it pins him on his back. It is better to armor yourself with no more than what you need. One life, one duty. Can it? Perhaps that's the difference between your people and mine. We never forget. Shall we move on? There is... interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Yes, we have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. Shall we move on? Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. Skunks don't mind the smell of other skunks either. Shall we move on? Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. As you wish. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I've decided that it is not much like any of them. Oh, it's not just that. Well, I'm sure that's part of it, but it's not only that. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? Then uh, that must be it. My experience with dwarves is limited, but uh, obviously I need to encounter more of them. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. Indeed. Can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now. Let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. It speaks. Its journeys are fascinating. I had thought its chances slim, but perhaps I'm even wrong on that point. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. <sighs> Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a tig, he said, deactivated, with my control rod not far away. It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he traveled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the deep roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure before anyone was the wiser. No, that secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. Squish. I 
I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Ah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit, and I would be none the wiser. I don't think I was aware while I was there, not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place, and I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing, never sleeping? <gasps> oh, I do not wish to think of that. On, then. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. I do not sleep, so yes, and I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants, all oblivious to it. Ah, oh, yes. It certainly was the height of intrigue to listen to the accounts of how young Dornan had scandalized the village by his purchase of an Orlesian hat. And the argument that those two muddy farmers had over the price of barley for a whole summer riveting. And then there were the birds. A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds, because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> I can see why you might ask this, despite knowing the fate that she has in store for me. The truth is that no, under normal circumstances, of course, I would not turn against my mother so. For all that she is not the picture of maternal love, I mean her no ill will. But Flemeth herself taught me long ago once you know your enemy, strike quickly and without mercy. Were our positions reversed, she would no doubt do exactly the same. I know my mother well. I knew from the moment I read that tome that this is what she had intended from the start, Old questions were suddenly answered. You can have doubt if you wish. I have none. I cannot say. You are my only hope in truth. Why? Do you wish me to beg for your help now? Is that what you truly want? This is my life that is on the line, and I am desperate. I know no other way to say it. Possibly. Stopping her before she can steal my body is the most direct way. Even you must agree. I do not know how much time I might have to find an alternative. Do you have a suggestion? I know no such spell. I could create such a spell only if I knew the details of Mother's ritual, and that would only be found in her true grimoire, which she will never give up. I have thought this through carefully. That is not the same thing, is it? Make no mistake, without your help, I would be forced to desperate measures. I would need to flee at the very least to find something, but thankfully, I do not need to. Good, then please, end this waiting and deal with her as soon as you can. This is driving me nearly mad. 
Yes? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Discuss away. Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Tis the child abomination you speak of from the haunted castle? If what you seek is to remove the demon from the child without harming the child, there is a way indeed. There is a connection between the child and the demon, one which can be followed to the demon's true form within the Fade. There, the demon can be battled directly. Only a mage may enter the Fade. It requires Lyrium and a group of mages to cast the ritual, neither of which we have, yes? And, had we those things, it would still fall on one mage alone to defeat the demon. No simple task, but there you have it. Yes? We are in camp, so tis as good a time- What's this? <laughs> tis a rather odd discussion you seem to desire, leaning in so closely. Oh, it's humour you desire, hmm? I didn't realize comedy had anything to do with this. How true. Let us do it right, then. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. All right. Don't look now. Crap. So simple to see, really. I 
So be it. Cross me and... You shall pay! Very well. I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva, very powerful and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Very well. Ask, and thou shalt receive. Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. I could also warn you should the Antivan Crows attempt something more sophisticated, now that my attempts have failed. I also know a great many jokes. Twelve massage techniques, six different card games. I do wonderful at parties, no? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? 
To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing. In which case, I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. Welcome, Zivran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. All right. Going. And I'm off. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. There you are. We have brought Lyrium and begun preparations for the ritual. We can start any time. It truly depends on the manner of demon. It sounds like a spirit of greed and desire, one of the more powerful in the hierarchy. It will likely engage you in dialogue and tempt you with an offer. Avoid it. Making deals with demons never turns out well. It only works because the child gave himself to the demon willingly. If the demon takes over the host forcibly, we must slay the abomination. We have only enough lyrium for one attempt. I hope you succeed. Such a young lad deserves better than execution.
Yes. We haven't sufficient lyrium at present to send more than one mage into the Fade. I'm glad we decided to take this route. This is really the best option. Very well. Who will go into the Fade? Then let us begin forthwith. Is that you, Connor? I can hear you! I'm coming! Father! Where are you? I don't understand. It's so cold. I want to go home. You there? Have you seen my son? I can... I can hear him, but I cannot find him. This blasted fog has me turning in circles. This is the Fade. Your kind cannot navigate it any more than you could navigate a dream. I don't understand. Where is my Connor? I will find him for you since I foolishly gave my word that I would. Leave me to it. No. No, you're trying to lead me astray. I do not believe you. Connor! Connor, where are you? Who are you? Are you the one that made father ill? Tell me now! I do not have time for fool children. Now tell me where this demon is. Fool? You won't get near. I won't let you. It's your time to die! Fools! So be it. You! You're the one making father sick! Why do you keep hurting me? Why are you trying to stop me? Enough of these games. Give me what I want. Trespasser! I will drive you out! Begin the onslaught. As you wish. Ah! Oh. Ah! You will learn to fear me. I need healing. Wipe them out. I'll help him! You can't stop me! Get out of here! You have to get out! As you wish. I see. Father wonders, seeking me, trapped within my web. All is as it should be. Why must you interfere? Why do you speak through illusions? Come, let us converse. No, it is time for you to go now. Do not persist, or things will go very badly for you.
I st Very well. No more illusions. Now we meet face to face. You see my true form and stand in my domain. It is here I am most powerful. And yet I have no wish to engage your power, nor should you be so eager to engage mine. Perhaps we should converse instead? I will not become an abomination no matter what you try! One soul I already possess. I do not need another. You need not fear me on that account. I wish only to talk. Do you take me for a fool? I know better than to bargain with your kind. Alas, that is sad. Very well then. If you wish a battle, you will have it. Let us see if your power matches your boldness, creature. Now we get our hands dirty. I shall do it. Oh. So it is over. Connor is his old self. He does not seem to remember anything, which is a blessing. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for... training, once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage, of all things. Eamon has much to mourn and rebuild, should he recover. 
But at least he can be thankful that both his son and wife are safe. I owe you my deepest thanks. I had nearly... I can scarcely believe Connor is the boy he once was. There is still the matter of Jowan. His poisoning Eamon began this whole mess, yet he lives. I must decide what becomes of him. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? You spoke with him, have you not? You know what he has done better than I do, even. I would not trust him, but I would not presume to tell my brother what to do. What do you mean? He is responsible for many of the problems here, and is a Malefica as well. Perhaps you are correct. But that is Eamon's decision, not mine. I'm sorry. Jowan stays in the dungeon for now. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, it seems to have spared his life, but he remains comatose. We cannot wake him. The urn. The urn of sacred ashes will save Eamon. It has been tried, and we will continue trying. Perhaps the demon's absence will make a difference. However, the relic is another option. My husband funded the research of a scholar in Deneram, a brother Genetivi. He has been studying the inscriptions on Andraste's birth rock. When Eamon fell ill, I sent the knights to speak to Genetivi. I hoped that he had finally discovered the location of the urn of sacred ashes itself. They were unable to locate Genetivi. In desperation? I sent more knights in search of the brother, or some clue of the urn's location. I must organize Eamon's knights as they return, draft new soldiers, and prepare the army to fight. I shall hand Redcliffe back to Eamon when he awakens, and in a state where it can be of some use in the coming war. Truly, what other choice do I have? No one else can. Even if I wished to do it myself, I cannot abandon Redcliffe to its own devices. Perhaps you could seek out the brother's home in Denerim and see if any clues remain on his whereabouts. It is the only place to begin the search, I think. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. Hmm. You saved my son's life, as well as my own. I would always be thankful to you for that. Right. You saved my son's life, as well as my own. I would always be thankful to you for that. At least working here, we get a roof over our head and the army's protection. If the Darkspawn come, we'll need it. You. You're the one who saved me. Then, I guess I owe her thanks. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. I hope Father gets better soon. He will, won't he? And I'm off. All right. Hmm. Going. I hear you saved the Arl's son. That's got to count for something.
going. All right. And I'm off. You return. Might you have news? Unchanged, I'm afraid. We've tried more magical healing, but nothing works. As time passes, I become more and more convinced the urn might be our only hope. Yes, but they are returning slowly. No doubt the war's progress, as well as the Darkspawns, hinders many of them. Then I must resume my duties. The civil war continues, and Loghain is no doubt angered Redcliffe has not been disabled. Good luck, my friend. I hope this continues to go well, for all our sakes. It is good you resolve this demon business. Now we must either revive the Arl or allow Ban Tegan to take his place. They're keeping me here until the Arl revives, if he revives. I suppose that's better than nothing. Sire, I have more news. Oh, um, yes. Well, it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Anora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, Sire. But Blight, or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen approached your legions for support, did he Never. not? Never! Marek and I drove those bastards out! We'll not roll out the welcome for them now! We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own! I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? 
Kalen's death was his own doing. And after much sweat, blood and toil, her labors ended, and the world marveled at what she wrought. Going. My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this. A reward for your deed. It's dwarven made and should serve you well. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. Good to see you again. 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 Of all yes. the... Make her rest the souls of all, Templar and mage, who gave their lives defending the circle. May they find peace at last.
Isn't that the point? We could all be figments of someone else's imagination. Just players in a play? Exactly. You, I, everything. All a dream. But whose dream? And for whose amusement? Some being of cosmic power. Sublime, enlightened beings. Cosmic power? What, you're serious? They thought of all this grit, all the war. They bloody thought of boils. I got a boil the size of your nose on my big toe, and some beings are enjoying this. <sighs> Disturbed, sick bastards, if you ask me. Ahem. I still maintain they're more enlightened than that. If I ever come across one of them, I'll give them a what for. Good to see you again. Welcome back, youngster. Looking to go across to the tower? Gregor came by, said I could have Lissy back. He seemed sad and tired. Well, I'll be here. Welcome back, youngster. Looking to go across to the tower? Off we go, then. Welcome back, friend. You'll be glad to learn that the Circle is well on its way to recovery. Do not worry. We are gearing up for battle as we speak. We will be there when the time comes. You've already done much for the Circle. Now, you must see to your duty as a Grey Warden. I wish you well. Know you will always be welcome here. My men have scouted the tower. It's a mess, but the abominations are gone. You are very thorough. I'm impressed. And I am thankful you arrived when you did. I shan't keep you then. Farewell. You really killed all those abominations? I didn't think it was possible. I thought we'd all die here. I'm sure you need supplies after that, don't you?
a fellow traveller of the fair lands. Are you a seeker, perchance? My packs are light, but I have a tome of strange origin. The Deus V. Eternus, rumoured to be the last message to a sinful world from the Maker himself. Ah, will the wonders of this all too small a land never cease? Well, they will for you. Get them! And I'm off. Yes. And I'm off. Let kings fight over kings. Trade needs to flow. May the ancestors protect us all. What business would the mighty Grey Wardens have with a man like me? Oh? What was this about? Oh, I see. Tauren must have sent you. I refuse to answer to a pawn of Tauren. Come, men! To arms! Is it true Grey Wardens killed Ferelden's king? I go where the work is, and it isn't here. Maker's breath, is that? Oh, I beg your pardon. Can I help you, friend? No, no, nothing at all. Just, uh, you know, thought I saw something. Since you are clearly looking at me, I would say that you do see something. Well, um, yes. Never you mind. Can I help you? Well, little of this, little of that, you know, uh, used armor mostly. Nothing uh, that would really interest fine people like yourselves. 
Is it refreshing or unsettling that this merchant is reluctant to show us his wares? Well, I'm considerate of my customer's time, that's all. What reassuring certainty. Oh, uh, certainly. So, uh, you're back, I see. What can I do for you? Good! I'm Maker's breath, is that? Oh. Well, um, yes. Never you mind. Can I help you? Is it refreshing or unsettling that this... What reassuring? The Maker, my brother and his family, made it out of Lothering. He said that the Darkspawn attacked it the very next day. The Darkspawn took Lothering, did they? I don't know. I expect so, since there was no one there to stop them. Well, it won't be much longer until those monsters get here. There doesn't seem to be anyone fighting them now. They have to open the gate. My suppliers will think I cheated them. Why are you here? Excuse me? Obviously you are no priestess, but shouldn't you be running a shop or a farm somewhere rather than fighting? You think to tell me my place, Kunari? You are very brave. It is not done. But it is done. Do not be such a blind fool. I speak the truth. It is not I who is blind. Look around you then. You see women throughout this land, fighters and majors both. That has yet to be proven. Which? That they fight? Or that they are female? Either. So I am not truly a woman to you, hmm? Tis good to know. What can I do for you? This ought to be interesting. Such diction. This man is a true scholar and rhetorician. I am honored to be fired by one such as he. Good day. Oh, you wish to talk to me? <laughs> Truly, it's a courtesy for one so well-armed to notice a lowly merchant. It's not your business, but like my father, I was born on the surface. We never had a cast to leave. The assembly says we've turned our back on the stone, but they still use the goods we bring. Hypocrites. Maybe it'll change by the time my children are grown. Twice a year, I'm confined to a trade stall in the commons, but I see enough. It's very closed in. My grandfather says I've lost my stone sense. I was born topside. I don't remember having it. Best of luck to you.
There are other places to sell. I don't have to come back here. The assembly is deadlocked. No one knows when they'll reopen the city. I demand an audience with you and King Loghain will not... Vieta! This land is held in trust for the sovereign dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the king's wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. Any dwarf who chooses to walk topside chooses to be excluded. You better not let some piss ant in after refusing Loghain's messenger. Wait, look at me. You're the brand who dishonored the proving. Trust you to be ignorant of our tragedy. Orzammar has no king. Endrin I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago, sick over the loss of his sons. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, we risk a civil war. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden! They're sworn enemies of King Loghain! Well, that is the Royal Seal. That means only the Assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And what was that you said? A filthy brand? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden! What? L lies and slander! King Loghain will not suffer this. I will not suffer it. I'm his messenger. Kill each other as you will, but take your sodding fight off my doorstep. Yeah! Now let's see. Wait. Yes. One first. Oh, uh, you're back, I see. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, certainly.
You've done me a service. That fool Imrek was barking for a week. Are all humans so touched? You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. A trust follow, Warden. Your arrival is a mixed blessing. Your return is not celebrated, but we must respect your new role. Fair journeys, Warden. If there is the anything complimentary to be said about these people, Please. tis that they possess a remarkable facility for carving stone. Now that's a thing of beauty, daughter. If you work hard like Branca, all Orzammar will know your name. Mother, I don't want to be like her. She... Don't say that. Not to me, not to anyone. Now get back to the forge. I want to see more details. Yes, Mother. Spare a few bits for an old... I haven't eaten in days. And I'm off. All right. Step back, Brand. Call yourself Warden, but the Paragons in this hall should not have to suffer the sight of you. If only you had come at a less troubled time. May the ancestors look kindly upon you. What are you trying to do, woman? I was not attempting to do anything, and do not speak to me in that tone. With the Warden. Oh, <laughs> ah. Did you desire a demonstration? Do you believe you can control him? Did your magic fail you there? You have no idea what you speak of, Kanari. Perhaps not. But I know a viper when I see one. It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these Deshers and the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. You will not speak that way about the man who should be king! Fine, idiots. I won't have fighting in the commons, especially in front of outsiders. I like that sorry fool. I'll have him in the Legion. Vieta! I have enough crime without some castless carrying weapons in the city. Your actions risk pain of death! Name yourself! The Grey Warden recruit? They said you were a brand, but I thought it a joke. Surfacers and their cloud-addled heads. Fine, O oh illustrious Grey Warden. What do you want? Surface problems. Well, we have no king to hear you. You can join the shouting at the assembly in the Diamond Quarter if you want. Bunch of Desher lords bickering over sand. Balin, Harrowmont. Is one so different? No paragons here. Are you sure you're still a dwarf? Ancestors have patience if Bronca could hear this. Well... I wouldn't be standing in dried blood. If you must be our warden, at least know us. Go to the Shaper of Memories in the Shaperit, the true bright spot in the Diamond Quarter. They've caged themselves for fear of each other. As you've seen, keeping order down among us working people is dodgy. 
No place for a proper lord. Balin speaks through his second, Vartag Gavorn, in the assembly. Lord Harrowmont speaks through Doolin Ferender from his estate. Are you sure you're still a dwarf? If you must be our warden, at least no. You have little faith in your own city, Brand. Excuse me, warden, but this isn't Dust Town. The tavern is open and the market is busy. Orzammar has suffered worse. The ancestors will see us through. Yes, you should. Hmm. Where did they put all the rock, I wonder? Hmm.